Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of My name is Alan. In a recent episode, we looked at some of the safest ship designs in the galaxy. We featured the Munificent Class Star Frigate, one of the ships of the line utilized by the Confederacy of Independent Systems Navy. While doing my research on this very interesting looking ship, I realized that it had a lot of unique design features which sets it apart from other ships, including other droid operated ships within the CIS Navy. Which is why today I want to take a look at the Munificent Class Star Frigate and talk about the 10 design features on it that makes it one of the best frigates in Star Wars. The Munificent Class Star Frigate was designed and manufactured by Hirsch and Kessels Incorporated a Nimbanese company that provided ships for the Confederacy during the Clone Wars. Prior to the war, the Munificent class frigates were mainly used by the intergalactic banking clans. The ships were deployed to defend IGBC worlds and the properties on them, including priceless treasure vaults and key financial hub cities. They were also used to drive off pirates, guard convoys, and basically just enforce the bank's edicts, including retrieving any kind of debt that might be owed to the banks. And like the Italian bankers and merchants that ruled the city-states during the early medieval era, the IGBC was also able to afford the best ships that money could buy. Which means that the Munificent Class Star Frigate actually has a lot of credits invested into its design. And unlike the Republic, it cost the Separatists no extra research and development money to mass-produce these ships once the Clone War started. Because they were pretty much already designed to fight in war, all they had to do was boost the production numbers. The E-76 Nebulon B Escort Frigate was around 300 meters in length and had a crew of 850. The Pelta Class Frigate, which is around 282 meters in length, had a crew of 900. The Munificent Class Star Frigate is 825 meters in length and has only a crew of 200. This is one of the largest advantages that the ship gives the Confederacy. Thanks to the faction's healthy reliance on machine life and artificial intelligence, most Confederate ships were automated. This includes much of the peripheral duties far away from the bridge and engine room. This included gunnery stations, repair and maintenance, and other more dangerous positions as well. The Confederacy of Independent Systems had a much smaller population than the Galactic Republic, which is why it relies so much on battle droids in the first place. The fact that the Confederate Navy could crew a ship that was 825 meters long with less people than the Republic could with a ship that was 282 meters long was a big deal. It would go on to save the Confederacy Navy tons of money and manpower. The Venator class Star Destroyer in comparison was 1,100 meters in length and had a crew of 7,400. Had the Confederacy fielded ships with traditional crews, there's no way they would have been able to field as large of a Navy. Another big advantage on having a small crew for your ship is how it affects the ship's design. Sentient beings are relatively difficult to keep alive. They generally need a specific type of atmosphere to help them breathe a specific temperature for them to be comfortable in. They also needed to be shielded away from radiation, vacuum, and explosions. Sentient beings needed a place to shower, to eat, to store their foods and supplies. They even needed places to de-stress and partake in recreational activity. And if you add that all together, one sentient being requires a lot of space. And the more open spaces you have that are heated and pressurized on your ship, the more spaces you have to defend and protect. On a Munificent Class Star Frigate, most of the ship's structure is off-limits to the sentient crew. Most of the ship is depressurized and some areas don't have easy access at all. This is why the Munificent Class Star Frigate has a skeletal-like appearance. This means that there are only a few essential parts on the ship that can be damaged, like the bridge, which is where the Munificent Class could concentrate its deflector shield. Now, the main reason why the Munificent Class is so much larger than other frigates is because it was originally designed to haul around a lot of cargo. This is, after all, a merchant ship that has been outfitted for combat purposes. During the Clone Wars, the Munificent Class could hold up to 150,000 droids at a time, which means that just one of these frigates could deploy enough troops on a planet to take it over. In comparison, the largest troop carriers that the Republic had was the Acclimator class assault ship. It could only carry around 16,000 troops. Since the Munificent class began its life as a civilian ship, it had a considerably weaker hull than something purpose-built for combat like the Venator class Star Destroyer. Commercial ships like the Munificent class Star Frigate was first and foremost designed to be cost-efficient and fuel-efficient. 
To make up for these deficiencies in hull strength, the Star Frigate was given extremely heavy shields so that they could withstand a large amount of punishment. The Munificent class's shields were so strong that it wasn't uncommon for the Star Frigate to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Benedict class Star Destroyer in a broadside exchange. Another quick and easy way to upgrade a commercial ship for warfare is by adding a lot of weapon systems on board. The Munificent class Star Frigate was easily the most heavily armed frigate class ships in the entire war. It had two heavy turbo laser cannons, two long range heavy ion cannons, 26 twin light turbo laser cannons, 20 light turbo laser turrets, 40 point defense cannons, and 8 flat guns. In comparison, the Pelta class frigate used by the Republic had only two light turbo laser batteries and three point defense weapons. We're talking about two ships that are in completely different classes. The Munificent class Star Frigate was very much equipped like a ship of the line or even capital ship. It could easily take on multiple enemy ships with its advanced automated gunnery stations and countless weapons and placements. The two giant turbo lasers hidden inside the bow of the ship were especially dangerous if a Munificent class captain could get a bead on your ship. The Munificent class Star Frigate was not originally designed to be a carrier, but due to its large cargo hold, Many of them were modified to carry Vulture droids and other droid starfighters. During the Clone Wars, the Munificent class Star Frigate would deploy with at least one wing of starfighters. Unlike more traditional piloted starships, the starfighters of the Confederacy were far more maneuverable and had VTOL-like characteristics. They also usually ran on battery cells and were designed for short-range deployments. They were basically there to screen these larger ships from enemy starfighters. The munificent skeletal design meant that the droid fighters could oftentimes hide inside of the armored shell of the munificent and pop out at the right moment to surprise enemy starfighters. This gave droid fighters an area to take cover in and help them survive longer, a unique and unexpected consequence of the Star Frigate's design. When you think about the Separatist Alliance, you can't help but think about mass-produced cheap battle droids. Organizations like the Trade Federation were known for their low-quality, high-priced goods. But the Trade Federation, which focused on transport and mass production, is very different from the IGBC, which was the premier financial cartel in the galaxy. Imagine if all the biggest banks in the world created a private army. I imagine they wouldn't be rolling around in Toyota Helixes with 50 cows mounted on the back. Instead, they would most likely purchase the best army and equipment that money can buy. Which is exactly what the IGBC did with their Munificent class Star Frigate, and it's packed full of quality. This is no Toyota Helix, it's kind of like the G-Wagon of frigates. For instance, instead of having just one reactor on board and maybe a smaller backup reactor, the Munificent has a full-size backup reactor that can operate the ship at full capacity should the first one get knocked out. This significantly increases the cost of the ship, but in the middle of a battle, extra energy is always very useful. Uh, you could boost your shields, your weapons, or your thrusters. In the highly competitive business world of Star Wars, time is a very important commodity. It comes to no surprise that the IGBC would make sure that their entire fleet of starships were all equipped with the fastest hyperdrives that money could buy. Which is why the Munificent Class Star Frigate has a Class 1 hyperdrive with a Class 10 backup. It was crucial that the Munificent Frigate could travel between the Deep Core and Outer Rim as fast as possible, especially when it was carrying important financial assets or individuals. This was also important in the opening days of the war when the Republic was caught unprepared after the Battle of Geonosis, and the Separatist Alliance was able to open up dozens of new fronts unopposed by the Republic across the Outer Rim. Very few ships in the Republic Navy, aside from the Venator, could keep up with the Munificent class in the hyperspace lanes. Recently, one of the richest individuals in the world tried to self-fund a presidential campaign. His name is Michael Bloomberg. How did he get so rich? Well, in the 1980s, Bloomberg designed a computer terminal that delivered real-time market data, analytics, and other tools to Wall Street firms. Not only was this computer a very useful gadget and tool for any investor, it also gave people up-to-date and extremely fast information on the market, faster than any other sources around at the time. Now, when you're trading massive amounts of money constantly, a single millisecond of advance notice can mean a huge advantage and millions of dollars. It's for that same reason that all Munificent Clan Star Frigates are outfitted with advanced comm systems. 
Before the war started, the IGBC actually used their munificent class star frigates as relays to send information about the market around to more remote areas of the galaxy, which might not have the most uh, complex hollow net system in place. During the Clone Wars, the Republic maintained control over the hollow net in much of the galaxy, which meant that the munificent class star frigate was once again used the daisy chain communications together for the CIS. The Separatist Alliance also created their own type of holonet, but it was nowhere near as extensive as the Republic's. Which is why the Munificent Class Star Frigate and larger Confederacy fleets were usually used as comm relay stations when moving through systems without communication infrastructure set up. The ship's powerful antenna was also used to broadcast anti-Republic propaganda. So as you can see, the Munificent Class Star Frigate is a pre-war design that holds up pretty well throughout the Clone Wars. This is pretty rare both in Star Wars history and our own history. Generally, once a war starts, um, all of those pre-war notions disappear pretty quickly. So I hope you guys enjoyed our video today. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. Uh, stay safe, and as usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.